We're going to start Chapter 3, Section 2, which deals with graphing linear equations. The equations we're going to look at contain two variables, an x and a y. So here's some examples of those equations. We have y equals 3x minus 7 and 2x plus 5y equals 8. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the idea of what a solution of an equation that contains two variables is. Um, and basically, a solution of an equation with two variables, x and y, is an ordered pair. And that ordered pair produces a true statement when the values of x and y are substituted into the equation. So this is kind of similar to when you were solving um, equations with one variable. When you got the solution, you were able to plug that solution back into the equation and it would make a true statement. Well, the same is true here. We just have two, two different variables. So let's start with this first example. We want to check to see whether or not an ordered pair is, in fact, the solution of an equation. So we're given the equation. Um, actually, this is a typo. This should be 3x minus y equals 7. And we want to figure out which ordered pair is the solution. So we're given four options here. Now, again, the one that is the solution should be able to be plugged into the equation to produce a true statement. Each ordered pair is made up of an x and a y, so we just simply plug those in. So let's start with a. Let's check to see whether or not the point 3, 4 is a solution to that equation. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to plug in 3 for x and 4 for y. So we take the equation 3x minus y equals 7, and we replace the x with 3 and the y is a 4. And then we see if this produces a true statement. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4. Does that equal 7? Nope. So that's not a solution. Do the same thing with the next option, with the next choice. In this case, we're going to plug in 1 for x and negative 4 for y. So once again, we take the original equation, we replace the x with 1, and we replace y with negative 4. We want to see if this produces a true statement. So we have 3 times 1 is 3, minus negative 4 really means plus 4. And does 3 plus 4 equal 7? Yes, it does. So in fact, b, the point 1, negative 4, is a solution to the equation. When we plug it in, it produces a true statement. So A was not a solution. B is, and we can just assume that C and D would not be solutions either. And I assure you that if you were to plug in those, ver those values for X and Y, for C and D, um, they would not be solutions to the equation. So let's move on to talking about graphing equations with two variables. So the graph of an equation in two variables is the set of points in a coordinate plane that represent all solutions to the equation. Well, it just so happens the equations we're looking at are linear equations, and they have an infinite number of solutions um, that form a line when you graph them. So there's an infinite number of solutions to these equations, meaning there's an infinite number of pairings of x and y's that can be plugged into the equation to produce a true statement. So the way we're going to talk about graphing these is using a table. So what you want to do is you want to make a table of values, and you're going to just choose random numbers to plug in for x. You want to generally choose negative values, a zero value, and then some positive values as well. So you'll plug those in for x. You'll see what you get for y. So then you'll have pairings of x and y. And you plot those points until you notice a pattern. And once you notice a pattern, you connect the points. And you are going to get a line with these types of equations we're working with. So here is the example we're going to work on. We want to graph this equation. Negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. So again, we're going to make a table. We want to make an x, y table. 
Well, because we want to plug in numbers for x to see what y is, the best way to do this is to take the equation and solve it for y to start with. Write it in function form. Write it so that y is a function of x, just like we did last chapter. So if we want to get y by itself here, we're going to have to add 2x to both sides of the equation. And by doing so, that gives y by itself. And we find that y is equal to negative 3 plus 2x, or 2x minus 3. It really doesn't matter what you use there. So here we just want to choose some numbers to plug in for x. Again, I usually um, choose some negative values, a value for 0, or of 0, and then some positives as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in negative 2, 0, and 2. And then by plugging these values of x, I want to see what y is. Well, remember, based on what we just did with the equation, y is equal to 2 times whatever x is minus 3. So we're going to take that equation and we're going to replace x with negative 2 and see what that does for y. We're going to do it for 0 and then also with the 2. So here, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus 3, negative 7. So when x is negative 2, y is negative 7. That gives us one point. Here, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. So that gives us the point 0, negative 3. And then finally, this will give us the value of 1. So when x is 2, y is 1. So we have three points right now. If I graph them, here I have negative 2, negative 7. That's this point here. And I want to graph the point 0, negative 3. It's this point here. And then finally, 2, 1. It's this point here. So we do start to see a bit of a pattern here. Can I graph all of this? Oh, but I'm sorry. This point is graphed. That's not this point. Zero, negative three. Zero, negative three is here. And we start to see this pattern. So you want to grab your straight edge or a ruler to the edge of the paper. And make a nice straight line. And you're going to put arrows at both ends. Because if you, again, the graph of an equation with two variables is a set of all solutions. So this line is made up of an infinite number of points. We, we use these three points to make the line. But it's actually made up of an infinite number of points, and all of those points are solutions to our original equation. So that's how we're going to go about graphing these equations for now. So now go ahead and try these on your own. Tell whether or not that point is a solution to that given equation, and then graph that equation. 